Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for what you plan to do. Thank you for your power. You are going to manifest in every life. We're asking, Lord, tonight, as we begin this crusade, with the all-sufficient Jesus, you bless everyone in Jesus' name. I will pray that there will be no exception. Every heart will be transformed. Life changed. Sicknesses healed. Oppressions taken away. Everything we need. A solution you give to everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we begin, the GCK for this month, titled for the theme, The All-Sufficient Jesus. I'm coming to John chapter 1. We're looking at verse 29. And the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold, Jesus. As we come tonight, I will present Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus sent by the Heavenly Father to this world that he'll bring solution to every problem. Problem of the heart, problem of the mind, problem of your soul, problem in your body, problem in your family. Here is Jesus, sufficient for everyone, sufficient for every life, sufficient for every challenge, every problem you might face. Behold the Lamb of God, we take it away. The sin of the world is bringing miracle into your life. Is bringing miracle to my life. How does he do that? How will he do that? How will that supernatural power of Jesus work in your life? Look at chapter 2. I'm reading there in verse 5. In chapter 2, verse 5, his mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Christ was about to perform the first miracle of his ministry. And preceding that is the word, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. When God wants to work a miracle, he wants you to do something to show that you believe a miracle is coming your way. Tonight, I believe a miracle is coming your way. And whatsoever, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And when you do that, whatever you need at the power manifestation, of the power of God in your life, it will be done. In my life, in my life, whatever needs to be done today, say that, whatever needs to be done today will be done. And the condition is that whatsoever he says unto you, you will do, I will do. I will do you. Look at chapter 3 now, verse 16. In chapter 3 of John, verse 16. For God so loved the world. The men, the women, the boys, the girls, the tribes, everyone in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have 
everlasting life. That's what he has brought. Life, everlasting life, eternal life, abundant life, healthy life, a good life, a transformed life is coming to you today. This first message I'm talking to you on the on Jesus, the Lamb for our salvation and satisfaction. The Lamb for our salvation and satisfaction. Look at three things. Eh? Number one, number one, we're looking at the Lamb of God sacrificed for our sins. The Lamb of God sacrificed for you. For your sin, for your transgression, for everything wrong that you have done. He wants to search everything wrong in your life. He wants to set it right. And tonight, he'll set it right in Jesus' name. Look at number two. Number two, he is the leader from God, supplying our needs supernaturally. Christ, the leader of all leaders, the leader above all leaders that comes to supply the needs of your life, that comes to supply the recognized necessities of your life. The leader from God supplying our needs supernaturally. Number three is the life of God. The Lamb of God, the leader from God, the life of God given. By the only begot, as the only begotten Son, giving us the believing sons. He is the only begotten Son, and He gives the believing sons all the life we need, all the goodness of heaven that we need. And that's why you are here tonight. He'll supply every need of your life solve every problem of your life and change everything that needs to be changed in your life tonight you'll do it in jesus name look at number one here number one is the lamb of god sacrificed for our sins and look at that again in john chapter 1 verse 29 the next day Jesus, John, sees Jesus coming unto him. And he says, behold, he was pointing attention to the people around. He was pointing them to this Jesus. He was saying, I am not the Savior. I'm not the one to cleanse your sin, blot out your sin. He said, I John the Baptist, although he baptized in water, he wasn't the one cleansing them. He wasn't the one saving them. He wasn't the one taking away their sin. And Jesus Christ came. And Jesus Christ appeared. That like Jesus is appearing to you tonight. And Jesus will reveal himself to you tonight as a savior. As the one that forgives all sin. As the one that breaks every yoke of every sin in your life. It says, behold the Lamb. You have to look away from everything and everyone. And everyone to profess it to be the Savior. To be the Lord of your life. You have to forsake them and turn your mind. And turn your heart. And turn your faith. And turn your mind completely unto this one that can take away your sin. It says, Behold the Lamb of God. We take it away. He took it away at that time for the people that believe. And he's taking it away today for everyone who believes. He's the one, the only appointed one, the only recognized one, sent from heaven to take away the punishment of sin to take away the pollution of sin to take away the power and the dominance of sin 
in your life, in every life. Behold the Lamb of God. We take it away. The sin of the world. The world is perverted by sin. The world is polluted by sin. The world is damaged and destroyed and defiled by sin. And the only one that can take the power of that sin the pollution of that sin, the perversion of the sins in our lives, the one that can take away the very presence of sin, sin of every type, and sin of every shape, and sin of every description. The only one that can take away that presence of sin, why does he need to take it away? Because sin damns the soul. Sin ruins the life. Sin destroys every good thing in our lives. And it is as you allow Christ to come into your heart and to deep his cleansing hand in your heart and life. And you allow him to take away the power, the pollution, the pain, the punishment, the plague of sin away from you. That's the only time... You become free from the judgment of God. That's why John said, and that's why I say, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. When does he take our sin away? The moment you behold him, the moment you see him, the moment you say, He's my Savior. Is my Lord, I accept him, I believe him, I confess him that moment, and it's tonight. For you, I said, it's tonight. As you behold him, you accept him as Lord and Savior. You confess, you cannot save yourself. You confess, you cannot cleanse yourself. You confess, you cannot make yourself a new life, but he, Christ, Jesus, the Lamb of God, is the only one ordained of the Heavenly Father, appointed by the Heavenly Father, put in place, set by the Heavenly Father to take all the shapes and shades and everything of sin away as you believe that and you hand over your heart, your life, unto the Lord, he will do it. Tonight, I said, he will do it. Hey, look at Isaiah, chapter 53, and we're reading from verse 7. Isaiah, chapter 53, we're looking at verse 7. Here, we're being told now about Christ, what he will come into our world to do. And what he will come into your world to do. It says he was oppressed on your behalf. He was afflicted for you. Yet he opened not his mouth. He suffered for you voluntarily. He suffered for you decisively. He suffered for you without any complaint. He said, yes, I see you there, here at the Alpha location, and there online, anywhere you are, he came for you. He came to turn your life around. And when he was to suffer for your sin, when he was to suffer, for your salvation and the oppression came on him and the pressure all came on him and the pain of crucifixion came on him he opened not his mouth he didn't complain he didn't kind of dodge it and it says he was afflicted you understand how he was beaten how they spat on him you understand how they put the crown of thorns on his head? You understand how they throw the, the spear by his side? You understand how they nailed him to the cross? You understand how 
he suffered all the pain, all the shame, and yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb, as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers, as dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Why? Oh, because he was bearing your guilt, he was bearing your punishment. He knew that this day you'll be here. And even before you came, he bore, he carried, he took all your sins away by suffering. What you should have suffered by taking on him, what you have taken upon you. And all you need to do now is to say, yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. You've done it for me already. You paid the price already. I turn away from my sin. I turn away from my evil. And I come unto you. Look at First Peter chapter 1. Verse 18 in First Peter chapter 1, verse 18, for as much as you know. You, you have to know this before you can accept it. You have to know it. I need to tell you. The reason I tell you is that so you will know. You will know that God has planned your salvation, and God uh, is now ready to give you that salvation. What I tell you, you know. What you know, you accept. What you accept, you believe. And what you believe, you confess. For as much as she know that she was not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, money, currency that cannot save us. All the things we have on earth, all the things we have labored for, the work of our hands. The sweat of her face, the knowledge that we acquired, all that cannot take sin away. We know that practically. Because there are people that have knowledge, money, property, everything man could have on earth. And yet that does not save from sin. That does not redeem from the punishment that comes upon the whole of humanity. And it says the silver and the gold cannot redeem you, cannot redeem me, cannot redeem us from a vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ. The precious blood of Christ. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Not when I see your silver, when I see your gold, when I see your property, when I see your knowledge, when I see your a kind of labor. When I, we cannot labor and have salvation. The only way we can have salvation Salvation from the judgment of God. Salvation from the perdition that comes because of our sin. The only way is when I, the Almighty God talking, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's why he says we're saved, we're redeemed, our lives are turned around by the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish without spot and today you will behold the lamb i will behold the lamb and the salvation of god the taking away of your sin and the freedom from that sin will come upon your life tonight in jesus name hey, look at chapter 2 here of john chapter 2 i'm reading now from Verse 5. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, the leader from God supplying all our needs supernaturally. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and he takes your sin away, the next thing he does is to see any need in your life. 
is to see any necessity that has to be supplied in your life. That's why we come from chapter 1 and we come to chapter 2. It was, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And they needed wine. Not pan wine. They needed wine. Not alcohol. They needed wine. They needed something more than water. So that they'll be able to enjoy the ceremony that they had in that Cana of Galilee. And our lives the same. There are times the wine of joy runs out. There are times the wine of encouragement, excitement in life runs out. There are times that all those things we desire, all those things we want, they run out. And when they run out, there is sadness, there is sorrow, and there is, uh, and it's like we're not complete. Something is happening here, and we don't have joy. Sometimes in our personal lives, sadness and sorrow. Sometimes in our family, something is missing. And because of that, the excitement to live and the excitement to do everything we need to do, all that has run out. The wine in that chapter 2 represents everything that brings satisfaction. And when satisfaction is no more there, here is what we face. And so the mother knew about it. And the mother said, Jesus, they have no wine. And Jesus said, what have I to do with you? Why did he say that? He didn't want the mother to control his ministry or his miracles. Because the God of heaven was the one that sent him that controlled everything he did. But all the same, Mary knew that the only way to have the supply of your life sufficiently, the satisfaction of your life supernaturally, is to listen to him, not to listen to her. That's why it said, whatsoever he says, it, she didn't say, whatever I say, uh -uh, we don't have salvation that way. We don't have satisfaction that way. We don't have heavenly supply that way. And she didn't direct them to Peter or James or John. She didn't direct them to any of the leaders of the religious tribes of the Pharisees or Sadducees. She didn't say, whatsoever I say unto you, uh -uh, that does not bring miracle. Whatever Peter says unto you, that does not bring salvation. Whatever the Sanhedrin says to you, that will not bring eternal life. But he pointed to Jesus, and that's why I come tonight, I'm pointing you to Jesus. And when you believe on Jesus as your Lord and Savior, salvation will come to you. Satisfaction will come to you. Eternal life will come to you. That's why she said, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Think about that. Whatsoever, whatsoever. Now, when Jesus speaks, and he's speaking to you tonight, say, he's speaking to me tonight. Say it aloud. He does not speak to your brain. Because if he was to speak to their brain, he will not tell them what he told them. He does not speak to your reasoning. He does not speak to your logic. You know, I'm able to put this and this and that together. Jesus does not speak to your reason or to your logic. He speaks to your heart and he speaks to faith. He speaks to your heart and he speaks to faith. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. What did he say unto them? Remember, they were looking for wine. And he said, fill those pots with water. He wasn't talking to the brain. He was talking to their faith. 
fill those pots with water. He wasn't talking to their scientific knowledge. He was speaking to their faith. Fill those water pots with water. He wasn't speaking to their human mind. He was speaking to their faith. You see, when Christ speaks to you, and you put it in the box of reasoning, you'll not do that. I can't do that. That's not reasonable. For me to have new life, the wine of a new life, the joy of a new life. For me to have the miracle of a new beginning in my life. How you see it? I just do that simple thing. You speak it to your faith. And as you respond to the word of faith. As you respond to the word that brings life. Salvation will come. Deliverance will come. Satisfaction will come. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it tells us this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. How? Will the miracle come to you tonight? Whatsoever he says to you, do it. What's he saying? Turn away from your sin and turn to the Savior. Repent of every evil thing you have done. And now rely on Jesus, the Savior. Turn away from everything you've tried in the past and your wine always ran out. The power always ran out. The courage always ran out. And the possibilities always ran out. Because everything you did could not supply the sufficiency of satisfaction in the salvation of the Lord. Now, he says to you, turn away from everything of the past and turn unto me. And as you turn unto him tonight, salvation will come. Satisfaction will come. And the goodness of the Lord will come in your life in Jesus' name. That's why it says in Philippians chapter 4, reading there from verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply. You have the supply tonight. You have sufficiency tonight. Anything you need, the supply is here tonight. Salvation. Amen. Amen. Healing. Amen. Amen. Deliverance. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord in your heart. Amen. Amen. And the goodness of God coming with what Christ has done. What Christ is doing and what Christ proposes and promises to do tonight, everything yours in Jesus' name. Psalm 84, I'm reading from verse 11. Psalm 84, we're looking at verse 11. For the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace. And glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. He says the Lord is like a son. You understand? The son serves us here at this half location. The son serves everybody in our state here. The son serves everyone in this nation. And the son serves. Everyone in our continent, all over the world, the same sun serves everyone. You might be on this side, you might be on that side, you're the same sun that serves everyone. And he says, the Lord is like that. 
He serves everyone. He blesses everyone. And every good thing we need, we get from this same God. And he says, he will give grace and glory. Tonight, he'll bring grace into your life. Glory into your life. Where there is disgrace, he will take that disgrace away from your life tonight. He'll replace every disgraceful thing with the grace of God in your life. For by grace are you saved, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. And then he says, he'll be glory, shining glory, resplendent glory that booms out, that shines forth out of your life. And your life will not be gloomy anymore. My life will not be gloomy anymore. Say it for yourself, my life will not be gloomy anymore. It takes you away from damnation. And it takes you to a life that is justified in his sight. It takes you away from every evil, everything that will have caused judgment, disgrace, Degradation in your life, it takes all that away. The Lord will give you grace and glory. No good thing will He withhold from them that walk uprightly. When you have salvation, that salvation comes to your life so that you can walk uprightly. Somebody is still wumbling, we need the grace of God. Somebody is still stumbling at this and stumbling at that and is not walking uprightly. We need the grace of God. When that grace comes into our lives, it makes us to walk uprightly, righteously, in a godly way. And he says, he will not withhold anything good from any of us. Amen. Salvation is good. He will not withhold it away from you. Healing is good. He will not withhold healing away from you. Deliverance from the powers of evil. Deliverance is good. He will not withhold deliverance from you. Supply. The supply of every need of your life. That is good. And it will not withhold that from any of our lives in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the life of God given by the only begotten Son to every believing Son. Believing Son. As you come to the Lord tonight and you say, Yes, Lord, I believe. Then, that believing son, that believing daughter, will have what the heavenly father has sent, the begotten son, to give unto you. Today, you have something from heaven. You have something from God. You have life, bright life, better life, blessed life from the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. You have a forgiven life, a free life, a furnished life from the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. How do we know? How are we sure that everyone that calls on the name of the Lord today, everyone that turns away, turns away from sin, turns away from all the ways of the flesh, of self, and turns to the Lord. How do we know you'll have that blessed, better life of the Son of God? Look at chapter 3, reading from verse 16. For God so loved the world. He puts everybody together. He puts everybody in the globe inside that globe and it says the world the world of the blacks of the colored of the whites everyone for God so loved 
the world, the world of the young, the world of the middle age, and the world of aged people. He puts everyone there for God so loved the world, the world of the good people. So people, they think they're good, okay, you're part of that world. And the world of the bad people, like Zacchaeus, he came to Christ as well. For God so loved the world that he, that God gave his only begotten son. So that the only begotten son will come and give unto you everything that he has. And he doesn't have evil. He only has life. He only has goodness. He only has grace. He only has glory. He only has power. The Heavenly Father sent his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him, I believe. I believe. Tonight, as we believe, and that word believe makes you do something. Believe. I believe. When you believe, you do what you believe. You believe that coming to Christ will bring salvation. That's what you believe. Do it. You believe that when you turn away from the past evil, you come to the Lord, he'll give you forgiveness, freedom, salvation. Do it. The one who believes must do what he believes. I believe that Jesus is the only Savior. If I believe that, then I will turn away from all the puny, poor, pretending Saviors, and I come to the real Savior, the only one that can save from sin. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Should not perish. Give me a good amen. Should not perish. The people who labor and labor and labor will discover on the final day the labor of my hand will not prevent my perishing. The people who try to do something by themselves and they think that what they do will earn them salvation. As if salvation is equivalent to salary. They'll be disappointed on the final day because everything you labor for, everything you try to do by yourself, in yourself, for yourself, cannot earn salvation as debt that is paid back to you. But the people who believe that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. But have everlasting life. As you believe tonight, what do you have? As you believe tonight, what do you have? Everlasting life, higher than earthly life, higher than Adam's life, higher than any life of any human on earth, past, present, or future. And the way to have everlasting life, which is the life of God in man. That's what it means, everlasting life. To have that everlasting life, the life of God in man. We believe that Jesus is the only Savior. And he brings salvation to your soul tonight in Jesus' name. Everlasting life is the life of grace. The life of God. The life of grace. And to have the life of grace we have to believe in him him alone and tonight the life of grace will come to you the life of godliness
godliness. Godliness. Everybody lives a life of ungodliness until we have come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that life of God, life of grace, life of godliness is just tonight in Jesus' name. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Tonight is your night. I said tonight is your night. Salvation has come. Eternal life has come. Everlasting life has come. The moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, is coming right now. I said it's coming right now. It's about and eyes closed anywhere you are. It's about eyes closed. I'm giving you the chance. And don't think of any other person. That's actually why you're closing your eyes. You're thinking of just yourself and yourself alone. Because if you were the only sinner, only lost soul in the whole universe, Christ was still have come for you. And he comes for you now. And he's saying, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. He wants you to give your heart unto him. Your past life unto him. All your sins unto him. All the evil of your life, of your heart unto him. He says, come unto me. Or ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, life, salvation. Anywhere you are, want to have this salvation, this eternal life from Christ now, wherever you are, raise up your hand. Your time for salvation has now come. Wherever you are, here at the Alpha location, there online, anywhere in the world, the Lord is looking for you. Raise up that hand. And what, if you are raising up your hand, please stand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. And say, Lord, here I am. I cannot save myself. I come unto you. That you will save me. What you told me to do, now I do. I turn away from my sin. I turn away from my evil. I turn unto you. And I know your grace is available for me. They'll give you grace salvation eternal life and it's ready for you right now say Lord I come Lord I accept Lord I believe Lord I confess with my mouth that Christ is now my Savior and my Lord. That's what it takes. Now, that life eternal, life everlasting, is yours. I'm praying what you now keep on standing, Father, in the wonderful name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to you. Asking that all these who have responded to your message of love, to your message of grace, 
and he turned from their sin and he turned to Jesus the Savior save them now forgive them now turn their lives around for the better in Jesus name give them your salvation cancel the sins of the past in their lives and bring a new life to everyone thank you Lord when it's done we accept we believe we confess they are saved in Jesus name we pray another amen Please keep on standing. Our counselors are there. We'll call on our moderating overseer tonight to help us during this time of counseling. Counselors, let's spread everywhere. Left, right, center, right to the roadside, beyond the canopy at the back there, far, far to the front, to the second field, people are spread everywhere. Please write their names in capital letters. Make the addresses clear. Put description where necessary. Write their phone numbers 11 digits. Please give them correct information. This is for us to follow up with you and to help you keep your faith. What God is doing in your life now is real. God is writing your names in the book of life. Let's have all members of the choir joining this counseling session. Remember, you are taking a lasting decision. God is doing something remarkable, unforgettable in your life. Give them correct information. And all of you giving your lives to Christ now. Remember that tomorrow, during the break, precisely around 2.30 p.m., we will be having banquet with you in the assembly hall of the school, very close to the kitchen, behind us, towards my right hand side here. By 2 p 2.30 p.m. tomorrow, you are to be there. In fact, you will have your lunch there. You get there for the Converse rally and banquet. Those of you watching online or through the television, you will see a number that is displayed. You can send messages to us through text or WhatsApp. And if you are using your Android phone or iPad or any other device, you can also click the link there. It will lead you to the form you will fill for us to help you. We are not through yet. Thank you for sitting down quietly and be praying, waiting for the servant of God to come and release the miracle that God has sent him to give you. If you have never seen miracles before, you will see tonight in Jesus' name. 
get ready. If you have a lame man around you, a lame woman there, get ready. As it happened in the past, and as it's happening presently, it will happen here tonight through this servant of the living God. If you brought anybody, deaf or dumb, if you brought anybody who is blind, get ready for your miracle and testimony tonight. Or you are the one. All you need to do is to believe that as the man of God comes up to declare the word of power, you will receive your miracle. There will be shouting of joy. This is going to be a night of jubilation. So get set everywhere for your miracle. And as you are counseling the people, writing down their names and correct information, when you finish, remain in the congregation there. Because when the miracles happen, you bring out the people to share their testimonies. Because tonight, there will be testimonies. You will say tonight that I never saw it on this fashion before. This is what God is preparing to do. Please, counselors, let's be very fast. Just take down their correct information. Go through all the clusters. In the middle, by my right, by my left, to the roadside. You see people right to the roadside there, right to the town road. And at the back, beyond this field to the next field, please go far, far to the back. And don't leave anyone out. And as we are seated, let's be praying now. Because very soon, the man of God is coming to pray the final prayer that we break the youth. The final prayer that will bring down your miracle. And so be praying and be talking to God. That this lamb for our salvation and satisfaction is coming to visit you tonight. This is a practical night. You will see Jesus, the all-sufficient Jesus, demonstrating his power. So be praying and tell the Lord, visit me tonight. Some of you, you have brought your family challenges. Pray and to tell the Lord, tell him, talk to him now. That Lord, I have come. I will not live here without my miracle. You have brought your sicknesses, your oppression. Believe God tonight that you will not live here without your miracle. We have had the word. You have given your life to Christ. The next thing is for God to visit you. With your miracle. Remember. That. Tomorrow. We are coming here in the morning. By. 8 a.m. The message will. The program will start. But by 7.30 you are seated. By 6 o'clock we take our breakfast. And you are seated by 7.30. Praying for the visitation of God. We thank God for the Christian Association of Nigeria, Taraba State. We have canceled all our programs this weekend to be here in unity together so that we can drink from the fountain of the water of life. So be here tomorrow. Counselors, if you have finished in your section there, you can signify by waving whether you have your flag or your program sheet or whatever wave at me so that I will know you are done please don't leave anybody out those who cannot write please write for them Write legibly. God is visiting men and women, young and old, tonight. This night must not pass you by. 
this night must not pass you by. Now all of you that have given your lives to Christ tonight, remember, tomorrow by 2 p.m. you are seated. Before that 2.30, you are seated in that hall, painted blue by my right hand side here. And as I said, you will take your lunch there. We will serve you your lunch in that place. We will be having banquet with you. And all over the world, over 200 countries in the world, that the word of God is reaching to tonight and for the next six days, as you are connected, seated in your congregation, or you are watching through the television, or you are connecting from your devices, please do yourself good to partake in the counseling session and the follow-up session. Counselors, let's be fast. Those who are leaders in the various clusters, if you have finished, please wave at me so that I will know that you have finished. You have finished, please wave at me so I will know you have finished. Remember to gather all the slips and give them to the coordinating pastor for this counseling. The leader in charge of your section hand over to them so that they can pass the slips over to the coordinator of the counseling department. Please remember to give them the special package from our Father in the Lord. There is a special package. That envelope contains a lot of valuable materials with a booklet inside that will help you to keep your faith. Counselors, be fast. You are done. Let me see you wave at me. Okay, the front here, we are done. Towards the center, you are done. But to my right hand, my left hand side here, you are still attending to people. Please finish that quickly. Get it done quickly because we are waiting for the rain of miracle to start falling. Remember, you have a testimony tonight. And I'm very sure you are expecting. That's why I see every one of you waiting and praying, looking unto God for your miracle. Hold on to him now. Start praying and telling God, unless you bless me, I will not let you go. Unless you bless me, I will not let you go. Please, be very, very fast. If you are done, wave at me again. Wave your flag. Yes, I can see it to my right hand side, those flags raising up, indicating that you are done. Collect the sleeves, forward the sleeves to the right person. Right now, the servant of God is coming up to release the word of power. Can we rise up on our feet now and get ready for your miracle? Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. Remember how to get that miracle whatsoever it says unto you, do it. Very simple. You raise up your hand. Lift the other hand where you have the challenge. And as we pray, I mention the name of Jesus. Your miracle will meet you there. 
my miracle will meet me here. And as the final amen, if you are blind, open your eyes, you will see. At the final amen, if you are lame, rise up. Remember, you must do that. Whatever I say to you, do it. Rise up, you will walk. You brought anybody deaf and dumb, test them. The power of God is moving about, touching everyone. And whatever challenge you have in your body, cancer, ulcer, anything that is causing pain, disease there, just lay your hand, raise up the other hand, a miracle is coming your way. Counselors stand by them so that when we finish the prayer, I will say the final Amen. You check up on them, the miracle will be there already. I accept, I believe, I confess. Raise up that hand. Prayer is coming, to, to, is coming now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We know it is done already in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone here at the Alpha location. Everyone online. Everyone over the radio, television, anywhere, everywhere. Lord, touch, transform, heal, deliver now in Jesus' name. Whatever the challenge, whatever the sickness, from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, let your healing virtue pass through everyone. Heal everyone in Jesus' name. That madness, insanity, I command, get out in Jesus' name. Any swelling anywhere in the body, whether it's elephantiasis or goiter, whatever, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Fibroid, be dissolved in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for any long-standing sickness, disease, that this moment, the healing touch of the Lord will come to everyone. Heal them. Let them recover. Set everyone free. Manifest your miracle power in every life right now in Jesus' name. Death, dumb, the Lord touches you now. Begin to hear in Jesus' name. And begin to speak out clearly in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are blind. Whatever the cause of the blindness, Lord, touch their eyes now. Take away that blindness. Open your eyes and see clearly in Jesus' name. Those who have stroke, touch them now. One leg shorter than the other, touch them now. One arm shorter than the other, touch them now. Stroke, paralysis, lameness, be healed in Jesus' name. 
Lord, I pray for everyone, right, left, center, at the back, everywhere. Let your miracle virtue, healing virtue, pass through the body of everyone. Confirm the healing now. Confirm the deliverance now. Confirm your miracle in everyone. Definite miracle. Spontaneous miracle. Powerful miracle. Undeniable miracle for everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. It is done. It is done. I accept. I believe. I confirm. Look at it right there. As you see what the Lord has done, you give glory to God. We're we'll calling on our moderating overseer to take over now. Stop your body. It is